to provide experiential DevOps learning for IT engineers and other IT professionals. Apart from this, we also provide career counseling, mentoring, and training to fresh graduates, postgraduates from different universities across the globe. You all can visit our website to get more information on the same. Coming to the next slide. So we have uh, this on spot offer for you guys, which is 10% uh, discount on the course fees, which is available only for the webinar day. So we'll be sharing the link for the same over the chat window with you all. And you can access that link and get the instant 10% discount on the course actual course fees, which we are offering. So our, week, our classes are uh, going to next batch is going to start from 24th of September and uh, it will be the weekend classes. Coming to uh, some of the testimonials or customer testimonials, what our uh, clients has to say about us, you can check that. A few more. Okay, so I'll give you uh, now the quick introduction about uh, trainers. So our trainers are real time industry practitioners who are having very rich experience of uh, close to around uh, five years uh, in the same technology. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Jatin. Jatin, you can uh, take over now. Thank you, Arshika. Uh, yeah. Let me share my screen. Yeah, sure. Welcome guys. Uh, so uh, today you all have joined uh, because you all are interested into the DevOps world as uh, DevOps is highly uh, demandable uh, knowledge into this industry, the IT industry these days. And majorly uh, most of the things we are discussing these days are about the DevOps. We are working on to several tools uh, like uh, Jenkins, Azure DevOps and uh, Terraform, uh, ARM templates. Uh, Ansible, uh, many more are there. Jenkins is also there. Team City is there. We have a Git, GitHub. Many tools are there into the market, which brings up the automation. So, uh, before starting up this session, I would just explain you what is the uh, DevOps, and then we will go with the further things. So, uh, according to the world, uh, we, when we talk about the DevOps, the DevOps means a technology and the set of tools which are used over here for the automation. So, uh, DevOps, uh, usually when you uh, see the uh, or search about the DevOps on a Google, you see an icon like this, uh, which usually means uh, infinity. Infinity means like uh, we are going into the processes again and again. So, usually what uh, we do into the industry is write up a code either into a Java file or either into a jar. Uh, then we create our artifacts and then we deploy onto the servers. Either we write up a code onto a .NET, ESP.NET, Python, or any other languages we use, Ruby. Many more are there into the industry which we, uh, the developers, right? Now the job of the DevOps engineer is the uh, one which we have written up the code by the developers. We have to deploy those code onto the servers. And usually the developers store those codes onto a version controlling systems. The version controlling system could be like a Git or uh, any other. Uh, we can say uh, SVN also. We have VFTFVC also. Uh, so for the versioning side, we have a centralized and distributed system, which we will talk about all those things in details when we, once we will start up the sessions uh, from the next week. So. Uh, then we write up a code and what uh, uh, developers do, they store it into this one and they try to run the code onto a local. Now, the uh, once they have pushed the code, now the job of the uh, DevOps engineer starts. They write up the build pipeline, CICD pipelines, which we usually know as continuous integration and continuous deployment. In that case, uh, what we usually do, we write up a set of tasks under the CICD. In CI CD, uh, CI we write up the task which helps to build up the code. So, for example, the developer have written up a code in Java language. So, we have to create an artifact, a package, an executable file, and then we copy the executable file and deploy onto the servers. In today's session, we will see how a particular package uh, gets deployed onto a uh, Kubernetes using the Docker technology. 
but when we will go towards the sessions and all we will cover up a lot of things like uh, ci cd pipelines and jenkins and uh, azure devops azure how to create up the resources in azure uh, using the arm template terraform and we will also learn the basics of the git uh, how to store the code what are the commands of the code and then we will also cover up the ansible that is a all format which we will cover up most of the things we will cover up in the azure side uh, from the microsoft because it is highly uh, demandable and ha um, people are getting a huge packages when we work on these technologies so even i work in one of the company and i have a good exposure on these tools uh, so i can help you in those part and even uh, our institute helps you in different ways to grow into this industry so in this way uh, like what is ci cd i have told you ci means continuous integration of uh, and the uh, cd means continuous deployment and the uh, structure so in ci we write up the task uh, to create the uh, package okay uh, the package if you write up a code in say uh, let's suppose in java and we have to package it up then we get it a jar file or a var file then we take it up uh, uh, and deploy it onto any of the package uh, to the server. So that deployment comes into a CD and that usually call it as a releases. Now into the releases part, we also write up a task, but in this one, uh, we define uh, where uh, we'll, we, uh, in this we define where we will deploy the code or the package. So in that case, uh, the package which has been created from in the case of CI that will be deployed onto the servers and that uh, servers or you can say that could be a VM machine that could be the app services uh, that could be a, a Kubernetes. So there are multiple ways to deploy the code into the servers and then to uh, run those code and get a desired results and output from where you can access the website or the applications. You can also deploy the mobile applications. Multiple things comes into this part. For CICD, we have set of tools into the market uh, and mo most of them, the popular ones, the open source tools are there. Like for CI, you can use a Jenkins and you can also use a Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps is a paid one. Uh, you have to purchase the licenses. You can also go with the other tools like Team City. Uh, many more are there, which is uh, used for the CI CD perspective. Same same tools can also be used for CD part. Also, we create up the set of tasks into it and deploy it. So uh, these are the general tools. Then we also talk about uh, when we have deployed the code. We also do a monitoring of uh, the applications or the servers on which we have deployed it. So from the monitoring side, we usually cover Grafana and we also cover Prometheus and uh, we also cover uh, uh, this Azure monitoring. So those all things we will take care in this sessions and all uh, we have Azure monitoring and all those tools are there. We also have a data dog, uh, which usually uh, nowadays companies are using into the market uh, over these days. So uh, multiple tools are there for the Git. From the Git side, we are using a GitHub or either we are using a, a Azure repos or we are using the GitLab. So basics, uh, these are the platforms. The basic is Git. Git is a technology, but GitHub and Azure uh, repos uh, and all those things are uh, the ones uh, on. These are the platforms which provide you those technology to work on. We have uh, GitLab. Bitbucket and many more. Then we also have some ticketing tools where we raise up the tickets and we also control the project so that the seniors can see what is progress going on. For that perspective, we have I can say about the management side. We have the uh, let's suppose we have the Jira or Confluence or uh, from the also we have the Azure DevOps boards, which we call it as a Kanban boards. So these tools usually comes into the CICD perspective. And now uh, in the, today's session, we will talk about the Docker and Kubernetes, how to deploy a code onto a, a Kubernetes cluster. I will give you a small demonstration of, of from there, how to work onto it, how to run the scripts, how to create the environment and how to do it. From the uh, infrastructure side, if we want to do an automation, which is known as infrastructure as a code, we have a Terraform, we have a ARM templates, 
uh, we have uh, also have the Azure biceps. Uh, and uh, from the configuration management side, we have the Ansible. We also have the Puppet. Puppet Chef. So these are the different tools uh, which are used into the DevOps industry these days. Many more are there, but um, these are the most popular tools which are currently used into the any IT industry. From each and every part, like if I talk about CICD, you should know at least one or two tools. From monitoring side also, you should know at least one tool. From Git side, you know, should uh, have a hands-on experience on one of the tools. Uh, from each and every part, you should have a one uh, tool on which you have the expertise and knowledge so that in future it can make your environment more secure so that you can learn more. So basics of these tools are similar. Like on each thing we are working CI CD, you know, each of them we are doing monitoring. So but the basics of all of them are same. But does that uh, the uh, things which change is over here is the one that how you work onto it. So how the things work over here. So for example, you have a car. You have to ride a car, but uh, we have a different brands of cars, so, but it depends upon on which brand you want to go it. Similarly, we have different tools into the market and then we have to ultimate goal is to deploy the code onto the uh, servers and uh, depends upon the performance which and the application, which type of application you have written and on which platform you want to deploy it. So uh, these things comes when we talk about the DevOps and uh, as a DevOps specialist, we have to work over here. OK, any questions anyone? You can uh, chat or you can send it in a chat if you have any questions. OK. So uh, in today's session, uh, like we have a short uh, time, so we will go with the hands on activity uh, for today. I will demonstrate you how to deploy an application uh, onto a Kubernetes using the Docker and the services. So uh, this is a tool which is known as a Azure DevOps. And uh, during the sessions when we will start, we will be talking more onto the Azure DevOps side. And I will also take you to the Jenkins, but most of the time we will talk to the words the Azure DevOps and how to create a project and organization and then start create, uh, deploying your uh, code over there. So uh, from the uh, DevOps side, like automation for CI CD, we usually to use a tool Azure DevOps from uh, for deploying the servers or the resources. We use a Azure portal from onto the Azure portal. You create up the resources and uh, with the Azure DevOps, you uh, store up the code using the connection between them. You deploy the code onto the servers which has been created onto the portal.azure.com. So from the uh, Azure side, if you want to learn and grow into the Microsoft side, uh, what Microsoft has done, uh, if you log into this page portal.azure.com, uh, you can create your Microsoft account and using your credit card, uh, you can log in and you can get a free uh, uh, points. Uh, that is $200 for one month. That is valid for one month. You can use those uh, uh, particular scores for the creation of the resources for your learning perspective from your testing uh, perspective. And after one month, your subscription will be deactivated. Uh, once your subscription is deactivated, you can use the another account or otherwise you can go with the pay as you go. So we will talk about these uh, things into more in detail during the session. Uh, for today, I will show you what is a DevOps Azure DevOps tool look like. So when you will log into this URL dev.azure.com, uh, if you don't have any organization, then they will ask you to create one organization. Uh, my uh, organization name is Jatin Valla 180056. This organization name will be unique for each and every person. Although I can provide the access uh, onto this organization to others users as well. But uh, in this case, uh, what is happening? Uh, we uh, like I am the individual person. I am an individual contributor who has to work onto this tool. So I have created my own organization over here, and this name is unique. And in this organization, I can create a multiple projects. So you can see I have created multiple projects into this organization. So uh, we will doing one of the hands on activity uh, on this for today. 
I will uh, create the Kubernetes cluster. I will take you through the uh, commands, how to create a Kubernetes cluster using the Azure commands, and I will also show you how to create a project into this particular, uh, 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 you can say Azure DevOps organization, and then uh, I will show you the code and how to deploy that code onto a Kubernetes cluster. So let's start. Uh, I already have one of the project, and even Microsoft provides you uh, different uh, particular uh, templates uh, if you are a beginner and you want to learn then I, uh, you can get a uh, you can search on to a google also and even uh, i have i will provide you the links onto the chat uh, from there you can import the project into the azure devops i have also um, pinged the message onto the message the link from where i have created this project i have imported the project into the azure devops uh, once you will import the project, uh, you will get a complete setup over here. Like uh, uh, you have when you create an any project, these things are similar. So I was talking about the uh, Jira the, from the uh, dashboards. I was talking about the different tools and services. Uh, what happens uh, into the different world like open source market? Uh, we have the different tools for each and every work. OK, each tool have their own specialty. If you're going with the Jenkins, then you have to use a uh, GitHub or any other uh, GitLab or Bitbucket for storing up your repositories code and all. Uh, and then for the management side, you have to use the Jira. From the uh, other perspective, you have to use different tools. Artifacts, you have to different tools. But what Microsoft has done, they have provided you one of the platform, Azure DevOps. Within the Azure DevOps, they have provided you each and every facility over here. So when you will create a project, uh, you will get to know that you will get these all those features in that project. Uh, this is a dashboard, so I'm giving an overview of the uh, Azure DevOps. But later on, once we will start the classes, I will uh, give you the complete information how to create a user how to create a repository, how to import a repository using a git commands, how to do that part. I will explain each and everything to you. So this is a dashboard. Under the dashboards, you can create a different widgets where you can collect the matrices from the Azure DevOps and then you can share it with your team. So you can do, do multiple things onto this dashboard. You can add a widget and the, according to that, you can uh, as, create a reports uh, for your team. Then you can uh, directly come to the dashboard and see the outputs. So uh, this is very easy to do over here into this Azure DevOps. As a beginner, as a new learner, I would advise if you're going with the DevOps world, start learning from the Azure DevOps because it will give you a lot of help in understanding the basics of the DevOps world and how to work into it. Uh, then we have a boards. Boards is basically used to create up the uh, services or you can say the uh, you can say the task. So we create up a different work items and then we assign it to different developers and they work into it. And once you have uh, completed that work, then you uh, come over here and update the status of the project and the task. So uh, from using the boards, you can keep a record of the uh, uh, applications which you are creating up. So you can uh, also control the work progress, uh, how your work items are working on, how your things are working up into your application. You can keep a record of each and everything from the board boards. Then we have a, a other fe features over here. One is called like queries, another is called a sprint. So queries is usually used to filter out to get a reports on the basis of some conditions. Then you can run up a queries. Sprints are basically used uh, in like scenarios like in a company. We usually have a sprint of 15 days. So in next 15 days, what you are going to do or in last 15 days, what we have done. So all those tasks are created over here into this. For example, I've created one of the sprint uh, into this and what task was assigned to that in that particular sprint uh, to that person that we control and manage from the sprints part over here. So we have uh, the boards to manage those things. Then we have a repository. So if you will import the project from the uh, generator, from the Azure DevOps generator, you will get this code from the Microsoft side to uh, test and learn. So this is a complete project which Microsoft has already created and uh, that is available onto uh, the Microsoft side. So you can use a different ways to uh, create over here uh, to store up the code and then you can deploy onto the Kubernetes cluster uh, that we will see today how to do that part. 
So uh, here you can see this is a repository. This is a Git repository. Uh, we can take up a clone of this repository on our local and we can uh, change the code. Then we can uh, push the code onto this repository and then we can again uh, run up the pipeline and we can get a new jar file. So usually the concept uh, what happens into the uh, IT industry is like first we have like uh, written up a code after code uh, we have pushed it into the repository after pushing it up to the repository a new package will be created new package means new code uh, which with the new changes which developer has made take those changes uh, take that new package and deploy onto the uh, server so uh, deploy to the server this is a complete uh, cycle which goes on uh, again and again because uh, they try to create the services into a microservices part. So what is a microservices? They try to create uh, create the services uh, in a small parts and deliver it on time so that they can get a proper feedback and the proper updates can be uh, uh, done into the code. So they get a uh, developers get a feedback on timely basis. They uh, ch make changes into the code and again create a new package and then again they deploy onto the servers. So you must have seen these days you have a mobile application or even you have a laptop new if you install any server uh, software you usually get a, a notification that new pa uh, packages or new version is available these days. This happens because they usually get a feedback from the uh, people from the public. They will change the code and again create a new package and deploy to the servers from the deployment of the servers. Then you again work again work. So this is an infinity process. That's why the projects goes uh, these days are in a longer term one year two years something like that it keeps on going up uh, with the companies so all companies nowadays what they want they want a automation why automation because it makes easy uh, their life earlier what was happening uh, people used to deploy the code manually but now they have changed the scenarios nowadays what they do uh, they have created the uh, scripts and now they just have to make a change into their code and push it once the code is pushed each and everything like creating up a new package and deploying to the server goes automatically. Now earlier when there was a manual process it was taking a lot of time but now if you are running up the same queries which was working earlier now again if you execute the same pattern and each and everything it becomes easy for you to execute the job and deploy the code. So that is the benefits of the Azure uh, DevOps. Let's go with the few slides and then I will show you the hands on activity. So in this part uh, today we will talk about the Docker Hub, Docker file, Docker Compose, then AKS cluster, how to deploy a Kubernetes services, all those things we will uh, talk about. So uh, uh, from the overview, if I tell you uh, what is a Docker, Docker is a set of platforms uh, like it is a pass services. Uh, OK, so that is user OS level virtualization. So virtualization, what do you mean by virtualization? Uh, earlier what was happening, we were using a huge servers uh, over there. Uh, and into the new servers we were creating up the vm machine and deploying the application but uh, there was a conflict there was some issues what was the issues that uh, the particular code uh, on which server or what operating system you are uh, deploying uh, that is dependent because you know linux have their own dependencies uh, and windows have their own dependencies they have uh, they need some other version they need some other software and so, some other type but so there were a lot of issues with this and there was uh, there was a disconnect between the teams. So to resolve this issue, Docker was introduced. Now, what is the help of a Docker? So it's uh, 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 it's independent of the platform or uh, it is independent of the operating system on which you are executing. So if you create a Docker image, uh, Docker image is a particular image in which you store up each and everything. The information of the operating system, the information of dependent files, uh, you store up the code. So if you take up the image and deploy onto the servers or any view, uh, then it becomes very easy. Even using the Docker images, you can also run up the services onto the uh, virtual machine. Also, you can also create up the sources on the virtual machine and even you can deploy the same thing onto a, a Kubernetes uh, also. So you can do that part very easily these days. So uh, Docker is basically these days became so popular because of this one only because is it it is independent of the operating system on which we are trying to deploy it. 
So uh, containers are isolated from one another uh, and bundle their own software libraries and configure them the files. They can communicate with each other through well-defined channels. Uh, all containers run by a single operating system kernel. So when they run with the same operating system kernel, it becomes easy to deploy on any operating system. So uh, in two, uh, Docker was introduced in 2004. Then it uh, in 2008 uh, Linux containers were introduced. Then in 2013, Solomon Hike started Docker as an internal project within dot cloud. So see, uh, it, this technology is not too old and uh, that's why uh, people are inclined towards it because they are learning these days. Uh, see, last changes were like in 2016. New versions are coming up over here, but 2016 just in uh, last six years. If, if you're starting up your career in DevOps in today also, you know, Docker will be still into the market in next uh, five to six years or until a new something can come up. So you are secure enough. If you have a knowledge of Docker and Kubernetes, then your job is secure because the next te technology which will be introduced into the market will have a base of these technologies only. So you have to enhance your skills within the time, but uh, still you will able to uh, make your career secure if you go to the DevOps world. So today open source community includes 3,300 plus contributors, 43,000 plus stars and 12,000 plus folks. Uh, all those things about the Docker. In the Docker architecture, what happens? Uh, we create up the images. I will tell you in uh, how to create up the images using the Docker file or the using the Docker commands. You create a uh, Docker images and you use that images to deploy onto the servers. So the first step which comes into the Docker architecture is the build. So using the Docker build, you usually create up the images. Then you, uh, you, if you need to pull some images from like their open source market also where images are available and the platform from where it is you can download is known as Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is itself is a platform. OK, uh, you can use a Docker Hub. Uh, you can log into this site uh, dockerhub.com and after logging in, into this site you can uh, easily uh, access the images so like this lot of community people are uh, encouraging to work on to the docker they are eagerly await others to also join and they help others to join so uh, over here they uh, store up the images they create up the images and uh, publicly they have the images now, nowadays you must have also seen if you need any software to be installed onto your system. So people have uh, installed or they have kept the softwares onto this Docker Hub. So you can pull the images from this Docker Hub and install the services onto it. For example, I, uh, let me see. I have one. If let's suppose I want to install a SQL onto my system, I can easily search for the SQL servers and uh, I can see their different images are available. I can pull those images and run it onto my system. So SQL server will be created in few minutes. But before that, we need to uh, earlier what was happening. We need to set up the complete environment. We have to do a lot of things uh, in past. But nowadays it has become very easy when we go with the Docker Hub technology. So uh, Docker using the Docker Hub, you can extract the images and work over here. So uh, once you have built it or Docker pull, you have taken up some images, then you can run those images onto a VM machine or either onto a Kubernetes cluster. You can do that part. Uh, behind this, uh, how those services work, we have different uh, things work on a background. Like we have a Docker domain, we have a, a client. Client is the one through which you're trying to interact. Host is the one on which you are hosting up your images. Either it could be a VM machine, either it could be a Kubernetes cluster. And then we have a registries. What is a registry? Registry is like a storage place where you keep up your uh, images. So you, uh, a registry could be a uh, public or private. So usually in a big organizations, we try to keep it a private. Why private? Because you don't want to uh, reveal your uh, code to someone else. Y you need your data to be secure. So you create a private registries. Uh, private registries can be created into the uh, Docker Hub as well as your uh, portal as well, which we have called as a in uh, as your uh, container registries are there. We can also store it to the uh, AWS. ECR is there. So at multiple places uh, we can uh, store up the images. So registry is basically used for storing up your own images. You will not save those images onto your local onto your local system. Instead of that, you will store the images to some common directory or location from where 
anybody can access uh, from your team and get a, a particular uh, code or the application. OK, so uh, as I have shown you, uh, this is one of the image which was created by a person. And if I need that particular image onto my site, onto my local system or either onto a server, I can just take up a command Docker pull SQL pad and this one, and it will automatically download this application and install this application onto my system. First, it will download it using the pull, then using a Docker run command, I can run this image uh, and then the particular software will be executed onto my system. So see, uh, this particular uh, task got created or the software got uh, uh, up and running in just few minutes. And a lot of uh, tasks not need to be done. Uh, you can use the same image either onto Linux. You can use it uh, the same thing onto your Windows as well. OK, in those cases, if you're working onto uh, Windows or into the Linux, some dependencies need to be installed beforehand. But uh, afterwards, you don't need other things like uh, dependencies. I mean, you need to install the Docker and you need to install some other softwares to your system. But uh, afterwards, uh, when you will uh, again, if you need some other images, those uh, steps you don't need to do again and again if you go with this part. OK, now uh, from the Docker images have intermediate layers that increase usability and decrease uh, disk size and speed of Docker build by allowing each step to be cached. The size of the cumulative space taken up by the image, all its parent images are very small as compared to the uh, other softwares. An image will be listed more than once if it has multiple repository names and tags. So usually you put up a tags with the images to identify that what type of image it is. So you can it's like a bookmark. You put up a tags over there. So all those things you will see in action uh, once you will start up the classes. Uh, we have a short time today. So I'm trying to cover up these slides uh, as soon as possible uh, so that I can show you half of the activity which can be performed today. Then uh, what is a container? Container is like a, a services when you uh, usually you will see uh, here this term container or when you will talk about the Docker. So container is like a, a centralized packaging for software and dependencies isolated apps from each other. So uh, what happens when you create up the images and you run it? It creates a container. Container is something like which is helping you to run up your services. Uh, so uh, that is the container under the container. You can run up a different type of services and those services will work onto a kernel. Kernel means the operating system kernel on which you're running up your services. So they share the same OS kernel works for all major Linux contributions, uh, containers native to Windows Server 2016. So these are the basic things about the container over here. Uh, then going further, we have the uh, Docker file. So to deploy a code uh, onto any of the server or to create up the images or first what we do, uh, we use write up a Docker file. Docker file means it is a set of steps. OK, in which in which what happens, you write up a different step of steps uh, or the commands to create up the particular images. So once you have written up the Docker file, you can do a build. Then after doing a build, it will create a Docker image. And then Docker image can be stored into the any registries or uh, the public registry or the private registries. You can store it over there. Once it is there, uh, then you can use that image to uh, deploy onto any Docker uh, container. If you execute it onto your local, you will see a container is executing over here. Uh, if you don't have it on local, if you are running out onto Kubernetes or either onto VM machine, you will see uh, there is a command called uh, Docker PS. So using that, you can see what all Docker containers are running, with what all services are running onto a particular uh, server that can be seen from the commands. Uh, earlier, what we did using the Docker file, we were uh, creating up the images. Now uh, there is one more uh, thing that it's called a Docker Compose. So what is a Docker Compose? Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multiple containers. So in this part in Docker file, if I talk uh, about the Docker file, it will help you to create the images to run the images. Either you can uh, run up a command individually 
or otherwise you can write up a docker compose file this is a docker compile compose file format if you see on the right side version and we are putting up the information that on which port number i want to uh, deploy my code uh, on which port number should i execute this particular pipeline uh, and the code so those information comes onto the docker compose so i am repeating up again to create the images we will use the docker file to deploy those images we can use a docker compose so docker compose will have the set of settings and steps which will help you to create the uh, images and run the images okay then uh, we will show i will show you about the aks now what is a aks aks is a kubernetes cluster so we have a different kubernetes services either you can deploy the kubernetes services onto your uh, local server as well like on premises servers onto a vm machine also you can create a cube install a kubernetes and run up the services over there and other way is like you can uh, use the azure kubernetes services or you can also use the aws kubernetes services so these platforms the cloud service providers are providing you those kubernetes services these days uh, what is a kubernetes kubernetes is an open source uh, container orchestration software it was originally developed by google it was first released in uh, on for 21st july 2015 it, it is the ninth most active repository on github in terms of number of commits that is about the kubernetes is basics uh, in a kubernetes we have different things over here on the different services or different components of this one pods service discovery replication controller networking storage management secret management resource monitoring rolling updates and the health checks uh besides the kubernetes there is one more tool uh, into the market which is most popular uh, that is docker swarm and kubernetes those are both the open source tools like i told you uh, for the same platform and the same thing uh, different tools are available into the market for the same functionality different tools are available into the market so docker swarm and kubernetes are both the competitors to each other but uh, their facilities may vary for example you have a own a car of a company any uh, one and two so if the both of them the motive is to uh, go and drive but they have their own features and some have their own benefits and disadvantages so similarly uh, docker swarm and kubernetes have their own advantages and disadvantages these are the comparison between a docker uh, swarm and this uh, kubernetes uh, services okay so you can quickly read out and giving you one out one minute to compare both of those services Okay, uh, I hope you all have read the comparison between both of them. Then, uh, in a uh, if I talk about the Kubernetes architecture, this is a Kubernetes architecture. So, what happens? We usually create up the uh, master node, and then we also create up the slave nodes. So, I will when I will do the hands-on activity, I will show you how uh, this structure gets created into the Azure. Uh, when you work onto the AKS cluster as compared to the on-premises, the benefit is of the uh, e over here into the Azure is uh, when you create a AKS cluster, you will get a master node and the worker nodes and all are configured by default. Uh, you don't have to configure them uh, a networking part and making a connection. You don't have to do such parts from your side. Uh, a Kubernetes, uh, Azure will do it for you. But if you will deploy the Kubernetes onto the on-premises, then you have to create a networking between them. You have to create a multiple machines from your side and you have to follow a lot of steps when you have to do a 
uh, uh, Kubernetes deployment onto your site. But in case of AKS cluster, everything will be deployed on your site. You can increase the slave nodes, uh, but depends upon your requirements. What is a master node? As you know, in a class, there is a teacher, the master. And then we have a small children. The uh, then we have a students that is called a slave. So master nodes is the one who uh, schedules and work, and they assign the task to the slave nodes. Okay, that is uh, they assign the task to the students or the uh, these help you to work over there into these uh, slave nodes. So master node and the slave nodes have a combination. Slave nodes help you to uh, work, and then it helps you to uh, complete the task accordingly. So in case of master node, we have the these components Docker, ADCD, API server, scheduler, controller manager. In case of slave nodes, we have these components Docker, Kubelet, uh, Kube proxy, and these things comes into the slave nodes. Uh, we will discuss these things much more in detail. Uh, these are the few of the slides uh, which tell you the comparison between these type of services, API services, scheduler, controller manager. Uh, and what is a kubelet? What is a kube proxy? So uh, these are the different things which comes into the uh, Kubernetes cluster, the components of the cluster master and the uh, slave nodes. And uh, what are the uh, usages of them? We will discuss into the classes uh, as we have a limited time. So let me uh, start the demonstration onto the uh, this part. So what I, uh, I will show into uh, you in this demonstration that uh, we will be creating up the uh, Kubernetes cluster using the Azure uh, CLI commands, and then we will deploy this particular uh, code, the set of code uh, onto the uh, particular as uh, Kubernetes cluster using the CI CD pipeline. That's what I will uh, show you over here. So uh, let's start. This is the particular uh, cloud environment. First, I have to create a Kubernetes cluster. To create a Kubernetes cluster, we can uh, do it manually. Like I can go to and search up the services and I can do that. Uh, but uh, for now, I will create up the particular services using the command prompt. So let's do over here. Let's say uh, we have pasted over here the commands uh, which I have already written up on my side. So I first I will see the AKS versions uh, which is available over here. Uh, so I have to update the region. Sorry, uh, we have to uh, see the East US. We can create the resources in any region. Uh, region part, I will tell you uh, once we will start working over uh, the services, we will see how does it works uh, over here. Uh, what is a region? How to create up the resources into different geography? So uh, I've gathered that information from here. Now I will create one of the resource group. A uh, resource group is uh, nothing just like a logical grouping of your resources. Uh, so uh, in that particular one, I'm creating a resource group. Resource group is usually created in case of the Azure. In uh, AWS, you have something else, uh, but in Azure, we created up a resource group and I'm creating one of the resource group with this name. OK. Let me see. So uh, using this command, I have created one of the resource group. If I see in the list of resource group, you will uh, find it out. I have created one of the resource group by this name. It will come over here. It, it will take a few seconds to reflect over here. See my resource group has been created now. Uh, so for the hands on activity, I have uh, created one of the resource group under this resource group. I will create up the AKS cluster. So when you will create any resources onto the Azure, two fields are always mandatory. One is known as a, a, a resource group. Another is one called a subscription. So uh, if you see my subscription ID is this. This as if subscription ID is unique for each and every type of uh, uh, ID which you will create it up. Uh, why this is unique? This is used for the billing purpose. Uh, I'm telling you these things very quickly right now because of the time limitations. But uh, once we will go over there into the uh, classes, I will explain you these things much more in detail one by one. OK, so I will create uh, now I have to create a particular uh, AKS cluster into this particular uh, so, uh, as your you can say the uh, resource group. I have to create uh, one of the cluster. Let's keep it something like uh, 
dev labs uh, i am putting one of the uh, query over here i am running up one of the command this command will execute uh, this particular uh, let me see the region i have to change it i have to change the region to east us so uh, after running up this command my particular uh, aks cluster will start creating into this particular resource group so uh, earlier if you see my resource group will be empty okay now the services will be start creating up over here once i have executed this command it will take few uh, minutes to create over here till then if you have any questions you can ask me you can type up your questions uh milson uh these slides are uh, uh, uh is the property of the dev labs uh you can talk to them uh if they can uh, share it with you uh these are property of the dev labs team so uh aks cluster is still running it up uh and uh, as i told you uh we need a registry so uh, we can uh, registries means where we can store up our uh images so you can store up that images either onto a docker hub so in docker hub also like you can see the repositories this is also called a registries uh this is one of my registry this is a private registry uh nobody else can access until i provide them the access to them uh this is the private if i i have few images over here so i use it for my learning purpose for teaching purpose so i have created those uh, uh images for myself so this image is a ubuntu apache so what do you mean by ubuntu apache this ubuntu uh this uh, particular uh image ha is running up a ubuntu server operating system is ubuntu and on that uh particular ubuntu server apache is installed that's why for the uh, referral purpose for the learning or the for the recommendation purpose or to identify i've used this ubuntu apache as its name okay now uh, once uh, i will create my own images either i can store it up into the docker hub or otherwise in within the azure portal we also have uh, one of the other feature which is known as the azure container registries so if i show you uh, meanwhile it's running up i will show you into different tab so in this tab you will see uh, i will show you the container registries so in this container registries i can pull and push my uh, particular images that's what i will do into my next command i will also create one of the azure container registry using the command it is still running so on other side uh, you can see i am running up the commands from the uh, azure portal itself using the command prompt i can execute the same commands from my local command prompt also this is my system uh, command prompt to run up the commands for the azure from my local what i will do i will i have to install the az uh, az cmd com uh, command line after once that module installed i can log in to my uh, subscription using the command az login so i can run the same command from my local also even i don't need to uh, log into the portal just i have to confirm my authentication from here once it is confirmed uh, you can see my subscription now my command prompt is uh, attached to this particular subscription so once it is done i can execute the same commands which i am executing it from the azure portal i can also execute it from my local command line so uh, meanwhile it's running up the uh, command for the aks cluster let me run up a command from the uh, to create up the uh, acr from my local let's see how it goes so the acr uh, create this particular command says to create a acr the resource group name is same for both the resources which i have created at the beginning and then the name of the acr which i have kept it over here is the jatin dev labs 
and then I have uh, used the SQA, uh, the standard and the location is standard uh, East US. So I'm creating up my ACL in US. No, enter is not working. Let me see over here if it works. So you will see uh, soon the resources will start creating up into the uh, this location. Meanwhile, if I show you my resource group, see what all resources has been created. I will refresh. So you can see my Kubernetes cluster has been created into this particular resource group. And if I show you over here, I have executed that command and it shows me the output uh, and it will start creating up the resources over here into this. ACR. So let me see if ACR is also created or not. You can see I've executed the command from my local command prompt uh, to create up the ACR services onto this uh, Azure portal and it has created the ACR onto this particular Q, uh, resource group. Now, uh, once it is done, uh, what we will do, we will do a authentication and the authentication, how to do that authentication. Uh, we have the other commands. We have to uh, search that point. So what we will do, uh, we will take up the name for both of them. Uh, one second, uh, let me. Uh, give me a uh, second. I'm putting up. Uh, I'm altering the command onto my notepad. So uh, onto this side, uh, what I have to type it up, I have to write up the command. OK. Uh, I have to alter this command. It says AKS uh, update. So uh, AKS update, I have to do it and the cluster name, I have to take it. So what was my cluster name? Uh, the cluster name was Jatin Dev Lab. So I will take that cluster name and replace it over here. And what was the uh, resource group name? Resource group is this one. Now what I'm doing, I'm uh, attaching my uh, particular uh, Kubernetes cluster with the ACR. So what was my ACR name? Again, it was Jatin Dev Labs. So I will replace it over here. Now taking up this command and altering and pasting over here. One second it is. I think it's uh, still working. That's why it is taking time. Although we can see up the resources is there. Container histories, it is already there. Uh, let me uh, check my settings. DevLabs ACR attach it. Uh, that is fine. Let me recopy it. Uh, AKS update Jatin Labs. That is the ACR name. Uh, GG, uh, it means a resource group and attach ACR. So this is the ACR name Dev Labs. Let's try again. Actually, I think it's still working on a background. Uh, it takes few minutes to work. Okay, now it is done, so it is getting ready. Actually, when we uh, run up from the commands, it usually shows that it is done, but uh, it takes some time to bring up the complete service up and running for you. So that's why I was getting up that error. Now, if you see the same command has executed. Now it's running over here.
So once it will be executed, we will go with the next step. OK, meanwhile, it is uh, working. Let me do other step uh, for uh, deploying that application. We also need one of the uh, server and that server uh, that is a SQL server over here. So but uh, because these applications when you deploy any applications, it needs a lot of things from your side uh, because it's need a SQL server to store up the data. So I, I need to create one SQL server as well for this uh, services. So let's take something. And I'm creating a SQL server onto this side. I will show you how to create a SQL server using the command. So uh, if I uh, let's execute that command from the command prompt. By because it's running, so if I show you this command, this command means AZ SQL SQL server create. So we are creating up again one of the server uh, SQL server at this location East US within this resource group. And uh, name of that particular uh, SQL server is this and the username and password for that SQL server is I have defined. So let's try to execute it. Now it has started creating up the SQL server over here. On a background, if I show you what all services we have for now into the resource group, we have the uh, into that particular example. We have. Uh, resource group uh, in a resource group. We have the container registries and Kubernetes services. Once we uh, SQL server uh, command will be executed successfully or it, which is still running. Once it will be completed successfully, we will create a SQL database. So this is an infrastructure which, which we are creating so far. We, uh, uh, afterwards, once the complete uh, infrastructure is getting created, these steps are usually once uh, done into any company. We don't do this creation of resources again and again. This is the step which we do it only once uh, settings. These are the uh, proper settings and the resources which we needed uh, for uh, your learning purpose and teaching purpose. I am doing it from the first step, but in a company it usually you get those things uh, uh, when you go into any company. Those resources will already be created. We just have to create up a pipeline from here and using that pipeline you have to deploy the uh, code onto these resources which we are creating over here. OK, so I think my uh, SQL server is also created. Let's do a refresh over here. Uh, it will show in few seconds. Now you can see my SQL server is up and running. Now uh, inside a SQL server, I have to create one of the SQL database. How to create up a SQL database again using the query. I will create a SQL database. So uh, let let me write up the query for uh, the SQL database. Now I will execute that command from the SQL database to creation. I am uh, creating up a one of in the same resource group. I am creating one of the uh, part. So in this SQL server, if I show you for now, there will be no SQL database. This is a SQL database. There is nothing found over here, but once this query will be executed, a SQL server will be up and running. I can see a few questions over here. But certification need for DevOps developer. So got for the part of the uh, certifications like it depends on which uh, tools you are working. Uh, if you are working on to the Azure side, you can go with the Azure 900 for fundamentals that is related to this particular Azure portal. Then we have advanced one Azure 104. Uh, then AZ uh, 500 multiple uh, type of certifications are available on from the Microsoft side. Similarly, if you want to go and work with the AWS, we have different certification for different purposes. If you want to uh, go with the certification with the Azure DevOps, you have a Azure certification one uh, uh, that is 400. For Azure DevOps, we have a 400. 
so uh, we have different certification for different purposes so it depends upon which thing you are want to learn and work uh, so it depends upon that e even inside the uh, azure also we have different tools on those tools also we have different certificates like for sql certifications we have uh, we have the uh, other things iot uh, certifications it depends like on which side you want to go in deep uh, yes milson uh, during the ak setup we can also set up the how many worker nodes are needed we can also set it up but by default microsoft uh, like i was using the queries uh, i have created the uh, by default setup so if i show you this is my kubernetes cluster which uh, sorry this is a container history uh, let me open up the kubernetes cluster this is my kubernetes cluster inside the kubernetes cluster i have these uh, configurations and all those things we have node pools under this i will get a worker nodes how many worker nodes we are working on it so currently i have only one pool and in one pool we have how many uh, things let's see and uh, the configuration of those worker nodes are here it's uh, three nodes are working into this part so you can see Three are running over here, and all are into which it is on Ubuntu 18.4. This is a version of that nodes. Okay, my SQL server is also created. Uh, my all resources has been created. Now I have to go ahead and start working over here. My, once my all information is stored, then I have to make few of the other modifications onto my site, like firewall rules, all those things I have to configure. If I go into the SQL server, uh, I have to go into the database. Uh, let's go back once again. This is our SQL database. I have to set up the firewall rules. So in that case. Uh, let me close this for now. I don't need that part. Uh, then we have different things over here. Uh, in this, I will go to the SQL server and change the firewall rules. This is the SQL server name. Uh, then we have these networking settings. Uh, we have other things over here. We can uh, make the changes as per our rules and settings, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, usually uh, people try or the companies try to keep, keep the uh, data secure. So for data security, they usually go over there. Uh, and do a lot of things like they try to make the environment secure. So they do it a lot of things from that side. OK, any questions anyone so far? Any questions anyone or should I go ahead and deploy the code? Okay, let's go back. Uh, we have the infrastructure now. If you see, this is the pipeline. Uh, this is this is currently failed, but we have a pipeline. Uh, in a first attempt, it was successful. Second time, I was learning something. I was trying to modify something, so that's why it has failed. Uh, I was trying to alter a few things. Uh, that's why uh, there's some issue, but that's a long time ago. Uh, now, in this case, uh, in Azure DevOps, we can tie, write up a two types of pipeline. One is called a YAML pipeline. Another one is called a classic pipeline. If you see this kind of code, okay, this means you have a YAML pipeline. So in a YAML pipeline, uh, you write up the complete set of steps uh, into a code language and then you can run it over there. So in this part, uh, in this particular repository or, or this YAML file, I have to update few things. Uh, update few things means this is the uh, when I was demonstrating last time, I have uh, kept that particular container name, this uh, things uh, that time. But now I have uh, changed the resources name, so I have to update those things. I will do those changes, but if I show you about from the pipeline side, uh, this is one of the uh, a, um, a yaml pipeline if you are a new beginner and you want to learn and you don't know you don't know 
what is a devops and how to create up the pipelines okay so what you will do you will go and you can also see an option called as classic editor with the azure devops you can also configure other service uh, servers as well other services as well you can integrate them uh, you can use a third party tools as well with the microsoft it's not like that you have to just use the microsoft product uh, tools you can also use any other tools uh, or integrate with them so if you are a beginner and you want to learn something new you can use the classic editor so what is a classic editor using the classic editor uh, I, i'm just like uh, you can select a template for example my application is asp.net i selected that template and you will get to know that these are the se set of steps which you will need to build a dotnet application asp.net application so in this case you just have to change the paths of your project uh, which could be into your repositories change the path and then uh, run the build pipeline and you will see your particular package will be created so as your devops has made your life very easy so that's why i always say when you are a beginner and trying to learn the things and when you're trying to connect the dots go with the azure devops because it will help you to learn the basics and how to do the things now similar things can also be done on jenkins but in jenkins you uh, it is a complete scripting part in jenkins you have to write up a scripts from basic each and everything and in this case you can see each and every task is done uh, one by one uh, into a proper manner that we should in a sequential manner but in when you are doing the same thing into the uh, jenkins you don't know that which step should come first which step should come second so you are not aware of that much more easily but in case of azure devops you using the templates you can learn and you can also take a help from this part now if i go back to my pipeline uh, this is the uh, pipeline which i have to execute onto this one i have to modify a few things as i told you earlier so my code is stored over here uh, into this particular repository i have to majorly change these things container registry name so what is my container registry name this time uh, this time it is a dev labs uh, i have to change the container registry name completely i will copy the reg container registry name from there and replace it into this now going further and confirming the other settings uh, compose file this is a compose file uh, which is written by default uh, when we created a project and the repository you don't need to make any changes the container registry i have to change it over here uh, build docker it's fine docker compose site again i have to change the container registry name then uh, from the compose yaml push it's fine again i have to run a bit docker registry name when we have to create up the uh, uh, images and then deploying up uh, and storing up to uh, into a particular uh, container registry that steps comes under the build when we have to deploy de uh, the kubernetes settings and all those things will come under the releases i will show you that part as well now let's save and i will execute this job let's see how it goes let me also confirm one thing amen okay let's see i have executed this job uh, let uh, let's see if it works fine or not if it gives an error we will try to troubleshoot it uh, if it uh, otherwise let's uh, see how it goes meanwhile it is running go into the releases under the releases you can see the uh like i told you ci and cd ci means the pipelines continuous integration the build pipelines the releases means we are deploying it up so when we created up a uh, create a releases uh what happens in a releases we deploy the code onto a different type of environment the stages which we call it as a stages what do you mean by stages stages means like uh when you write up a uh, any code okay and you when you uh, need to deploy and make it make it available for the uh, public before that you deploy onto a test servers why to test servers because uh, inside development team and testing team can test its functionality and if it looks good then it should go with the prod environment so if you see my release pipeline release pipeline means currently i am deploying it onto a dev servers so that a uh, de development team can uh, learn and test it from here so that is what we are doing over here uh, it is deploying onto a dev servers okay 
so we have some uh, 10 minutes any questions any doubt let's see if pipeline is running oh, it's just failed it failed again Look, let me do one thing i made some changes it could be that reason uh, i can reward those changes Uh, that is a benefit of that particular uh, uh, code uh, or the thing. What we can do, we can reward the changes. We can uh, do a, a rollback. So in a Azure, usually we can roll it back. So I have added this particular line. That's why it, I, I think it might be failing. So let me rename that. I usually I play around. So uh, that is one of the reason it could be the one. Let's see over here. The pipeline. Now, what do you mean by DevOps? Like you have seen, uh, I have made the changes into that code and automatically this uh, release, uh, this pipeline start executing because uh, auto trigger was open. So usually that is the advantage of the CI CD. As soon as the person makes changes into his code and save it and commit it, the pipeline and the other processes should run automatically. So let's see if it runs. And using the uh, repositories version controlling, I have uh, seen what changes I have made it in past. OK, that's why I reverted that changes only. Earlier what I made, I just added a, a hash over here. That could be one of the reason that it started failing into this part. Uh, now let's see uh, once I have re uh, removed that hash, does it work or not? So in my current file, if I show you in a readme file, that hash doesn't exist. Uh, and if I want to see the history, what all changes were made into this one, I can see from the history. So it can be seen uh, from this part. Now let's see again it failed. I have to resolve those issues. So basically, if I tell you an overview, uh, these things goes like this. Uh, we have less time. Otherwise, I would have resolved this error. Uh, I, I was playing around, so it might, I might have changed the uh, incorrect thing. Usually what it happens, uh, you create up the pipeline and then uh, using this pipeline, a particular image will be pushed into this Azure uh, particular container registry. Uh, images and then uh, from uh, here is the option like you can see repositories image will be stored over here into this repository once this repository image is available you can take it from there and deploy from the releases to the servers so if you have any questions or doubts you can ask me we have to uh, five to ten minutes left you can ask your doubts and any queries anything anyone so guys we are unmuting you and you can ask your queries just a moment You guys can ask your questions. We have already unmuted your all of you and one by one you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, you can ask your queries, whatever queries you guys are having.
Um, yeah. Guys, any question regarding the technical, um, any technical queries, uh, any any question regarding the next batch which we are going to start? Any of your doubts you can ask. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So, as uh, so you were showing us the basic of the DevOps, so if we want to enrollment uh, ourselves in this course, upcoming course, then uh, will uh, we uh, learn about how to create a new project, deploy it here, or uh, deploy in Kubernetes? Also, there is a huge question about now that I am working on ASP.NET and .NET platform. So everyone says that .NET Core is a cross-platform based uh, development tools. So for deploying .NET Core application, uh, yeah, if we uh, use Azure DevOps or Azure Server or AWS, then we need to pay a lot. So for that case, if we you want to use the Docker uh, Docker Hub or Kubernetes and use any free or Linux based uh, server, then will I uh, this course or upcoming course will helpful for us? Yes, uh, that will be helpful for you uh, because in this complete course we will talk about these topics, these complete topics. That's so how to uh, deploy it in Linux based server. Apart from this Azure or any uh, highly paid server. Uh, on uh, Linux machines, uh, you mean a uh, uh, VM machines, correct? Yes, yes, yes. the, the uh, deployment server. Because the uh, server, you, you mean on-premise servers? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, because uh, as uh, you know, the Windows server or uh, Azure server or AWS servers are very costly. So uh, uh, I want to uh, use Linux server for deploying our application. So see, uh, in uh, see, like I told you earlier, uh, what happens? Either you're deploying onto a Linux. Uh, see, basic is Linux. Okay. So yes. either uh, either you're deploying it onto a, a Azure, either you're deploying in a, a AWS, or either to your local. Okay. So uh, things uh, doesn't change because basic is Linux. I because okay. uh, you will create a VM machine in Linux with the 18.0 uh, uh, version. Similarly, you will create it onto a AWS as well with 18.0 version. So if I will teach you onto the Azure side also, you can do it on your on premises also. Basics is like you have to know uh, how to deploy an application onto a Linux server. Uh, okay. So that is the Even part. Linux server. Okay. Okay. If I will teach you in Azure, you will get to learn how to deploy an application onto a AWS as well and as either onto on premises as well. Okay. And uh, will you uh, start with a basic application, basic web application? Yeah, I will give you demonstration. I will give you a lot of hands on activities and I will give you homework as well. So if you will oh. uh, complete your homework on time uh, as per the uh, schedule, then you will be able to learn a lot of new things. Okay, uh, how many classes uh, will be conducted in a week? Uh, they, that will be on weekends. Three uh, three hours on each weekend. Oh, okay. Okay, then that is from my side. Okay, thank you. Anyone any, any other questions? So we left we are left with no time. Uh, anybody uh, having any of the queries, uh, you can you know drop your queries and we'll answer your queries. Um, uh, you know whatever queries you'll be having, we'll answer that. Yeah. And uh, uh, we keep on conducting uh, such webinars.
so uh, you can you know follow us on linkedin facebook or uh, social media channels and uh, you can get the updates on the upcoming webinars and the uh, you know uh, upcoming uh, sessions we are going to conduct upcoming courses and batches details everything we keep on posting our uh, on our social media pages so thank you guys thank you jatin for the wonderful session and thank you yeah. everyone for attending the webinar thank you hello rishika one minute uh, before uh, ending you uh, so will you uh, guys uh, going to send us the email about the details about the upcoming course uh, course fees and uh, starting date etc pardon jatin uh, 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 so that uh, will you guys uh, email us the upcoming course details course content and the pieces and uh, start date in upcoming uh, course uh, is going to start coming batch is going to start from uh, 24th of september you can check on our website our website link uh, we are providing you the website uh, link direct link to the course detail on the chat window you can go on that link and check on the uh, course details and the um, and the batch date next batch date okay okay yeah, yeah. so thank you guys uh, thank you so much for attending this session thank you thank you you and jatin okay thank you everyone bye